My name is Don Hatfield. I'm director of global sales. So uh, I actually uh, manage a, a few groups at Intrepid. Um, but uh, today, what I'd like to do is talk to you a bit about the progress we've made with the NeoVi Red 2 and NeoVi Fire 3. Um, so we already heard a lot from Cold about the uh, challenges uh, and the Fire 2, I'm sorry, the, the NeoVi Fire 3 and the NeoVi Red 2, we've devised to keep moving forward and help our customers with the latest challenges. And some of those challenges are just, you know, the vehicles are now being designed with more than 8CAN networks. You know, it seems like I can think back 10 years ago and people think we'll never use more than 8CAN channels. <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, right. So, uh, it seems like we, we constantly strive to eat our own words uh, in the industry. Uh, there's a lot more data to consume, to process, uh, to display, uh, a lot more authentication, right? Uh, think back 10 years or 15 years and uh, you know what we weren't even thinking about security. And some of the people I see here in the room, their jobs are all about security now. That's what they think about all day long. Uh, of course, automotive ethernet, Gateways is, uh, are a big thing now where I've got one particular type of network. I got to hook up this other network somehow in my lab uh, for some particular application, connect up a device to log. Uh, so I need some sort of a gateway to travel uh, to get that data across. For instance, I've got Ethernet data, but my loggers all can. How am I going to do that? Well, you can put a gateway in there. Uh, wireless capabilities. And uh, and of course, yet we, we still cannot get let go of the past. So, uh, you know, so we still need somehow to get single wire. It's still not gone. LSFT occasionally uh, still have LIN, of course. And FlexRay seems like it's it's the past now that we've been moving so much in the Ethernet. So, so of course, we devised this. And, and many of you have heard about these tools and heard they are coming. They're going to be here eventually. Uh, so here is the update. Uh, so first, for the NeoVi Red 2, uh, the NeoVi Red 2 essentially replaces the Fire 2 for most every customer. It has eight channels of CAN. Uh, it has really a lot of the same features uh, with some key improvements. Uh, one of those improvements is to have a couple of thousand base T ports. So you have gigabit ports uh, to monitor Ethernet. Uh, so uh, you can also use one of those ports for do IP or doing XCP over Ethernet. Okay, uh, so so uh, one one of the things that we never thought about with the Fire Two is that we did have an Ethernet port on there, and we thought, well, we're going to use that for do IP. But a lot of customers really wanted to use that as their way to connect to the device in the first place because maybe they've got 100 feet in the test cell and need to run. So we did develop the ability instead of just connecting up to U USB. Well, you can connect up to Ethernet with a Fire 2. Most people still probably don't know that. With the Red 2, we've moved to the Ethernet port. We will eventually support the USB port uh, as well. But uh, there's a couple of connectors on there. Some of these look very familiar to you, and some of them are pretty foreign at the moment. Uh, you know, the good old barrel jack, the, the host port for USB Type A, a couple of Ethernet connectors instead of just one. Uh, and of course, the, the DB26, although that pinout is a bit different, but I'll talk about that near the end of the presentation. And there is this uh, main AX connector that's actually for antennas right here. Okay. And the Neil Light Fire 3 is really the maximum performance, maximum network, 16 canopy channels in one box. And two of those are selectable. So you can have dual wire, single wire, LSFT, or LIN for those channels so that you can get up to eight LIN channels or eight LIN networks in one box, uh, which uh, you think, well, we're getting more CAN and ethernet. We're gonna get rid of LIN. No, LIN's cheap, still plenty of LIN in cars. Uh, it's probably not going away because it's just so cheap. There's, there, are some, uh, there are some networks that are coming out and saying we can replace LIN. We'll see how that works out. But uh, you technically have three different ethernet ports in the Fire 3. You've got two that are the, the two RG45s in the case. There's a third one that's on the second DB26 connector. I don't have a shot of the end of the Fire 3, but uh, 
the second DB26, the layout's identical, except there's a second DB26 here. And that second DB26 just happens to be pinned out just like a fire two. So, so data logging features, uh, it can log a little bit more data. So there's actually two full-size SD card slots, uh, and these are SD stand uh, version 3.0. So they can do 800 megabit per second, okay? Uh, because we've got a lot more data coming in. Uh, coming in. It also has built uh, built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, and it does have GPS, although that needs an internal antenna. The Bluetooth and Wi-Fi actually can you can choose between the internal antennas or the external antennas through that Mate AX connector. So it's your choice for those. Now wireless data logging. Uh, I know Chris is going to be talking uh, after the break uh, a bit about our newest. Uh, newest wireless uh, data logging. Uh, but uh, one of the issues that we have now is that mainly anybody doing wireless data logging is using a Neovite Ion. That product is, it's been out for about 10 years now. So, uh, so the Red 2 and Fire 3 will have the ability for wireless data logging. You can use Wi-Fi or you can connect in an external uh, modem. We are developing our own external modem, the Red 4G. Uh, that is going to be happening sometime in Q4 this year. Uh, and we will have some other cellular options available as well. You can use an external one through Ethernet or, or uh, through the host port when that's enabled later on this year. Um, there's uh, plenty of common features that are actually very similar to the Fire 2. Uh, we do have uh, an IMU inside of the Fire 2 and Red 3. Uh, and Optionally, if you need higher accuracy GPS, we can actually move to a different chip that would get the RTK. Um, of course, the LEDs got to have the colorful LEDs, right? You know, what, what would it, it couldn't be an intrepid product without colorful LEDs to flash up when you boot it up, right? Uh, so, and we do have the ability for the ISM uh, for cybersecurity. So basically being able to hold certificates in the box and, and all that kind of stuff all the great things that you need to do a lot more now. And max performance, which I'm going to talk about specifically here in detail once I find my phone to make sure I don't go past break time. Nobody wants to go past break time. So one of the things I've done successfully with a Fire 2 and other products in the past is, is doing gateways or ECU simulations. Uh, the Red 2 and the Fire 3 have far better performance than the Fire 2 even. And the Fire 2 can actually do uh, security algorithms. Uh, if you provide the security algorithm, you can actually do things like signal injection, where you change one of the signals or part of your PDU, recalculate everything, send it on, and it's still accepted by the receiving ECU. Uh, so this actually has the ability to do uh, that even faster than the uh, Fire 2, but I have a specific case point I want to bring up for you to discuss. Uh, so, you know, this could essentially sit as a man in the middle, and if you have the security algorithm, it could literally change the data en route, recalculating everything, maintaining freshness values, etc. if you're using security uh, um, uh, onboard communication. Um, but let me talk a little bit about this. Uh, we had an application where somebody wanted to replay data from uh, our Fire 2, and they wanted to use it to test the gateway, but there was a problem. They wanted to transmit eight channels of CAN and do that on eight channels, but at like 90% plus of bus load. So that's kind of pushing it. So it turns out if you try that with the Fire 2, it's going to be a problem, a big problem. And I'll show you the stats to prove all that. Uh, the idea was we need the customer needed to have a very solid ability to play back that data through the gateway so they can receive it on the other end and, and then be able to tell what is the latency, you know, residency inside of this gateway, if you will. So we usually would move to another product like the Rad Galaxy for that because it has a, a later architecture. Uh, you know, you're looking at for the Fire 2, uh, you know, it was something that was developed back in say 2015, but it wasn't really developed for doing that serious of a bus load. Okay. It was really more of a data logger displaying the data. Okay. So before we get into the stats, let me explain. Uh, 
I'm going to show you some box and whisker plots of the different messages that we are sending, different canned frames. And uh, if you will, you can think of this as another way to look at a histogram. Okay. If you look at this, this bell curve right here, imagine that every time you send a certain can message at a certain time, you'd expect it to be right in the middle. In fact, right where you see that red X right here in the middle of that square. Okay. So that would be your target. And if you're lucky, every time you send it, it's going to be right on target. But you know can. Can is going to have some jitter in it. So it's not going to happen every time exactly at the same time. So, of course, you can have a variation. So the box actually bounds the 25th percentile and 75th percentile. So basically, half of all of the frames that you send would be within that. And then, of course, just like a bell curve, most of them are centering around the middle that median. The edges, those whiskers that stick out on the edges, those are the extremes. So that means this one came out way too quick. This one came out way too slow. This is the, the worst case that you had. Okay. So smaller widths are better. If you want it to be, if, if, if you want it to show that you are very accurate, then you want to have less extremes. So you could just imagine those whiskers coming in and that box getting smaller. And ultimately, if everything was perfect every single time, straight line, okay? So let's take a look at what the Fire 2, well, I'll show you here a couple more things, but basically this kind of, I put these slides in here, I'll skip over it real quick, but basically just shows as you get more precise and more accurate, uh, you're gonna see all that stuff collapse in, or if it's a lot wider, then that's a problem, okay? So this is actually the Neil by Fire 2. I wish I could zoom in on this. Unfortunately, my pointer won't let me do it very well. Um, this is actually only 60% bus utilization. So back in the old days, we tried not to design a vehicle that had a CAN bus that was doing over 60%. Okay, I know that's, you know, that's old, that's old history now. But you can see by looking at these graphs here that it's not bad. You, you do have some outliers, but most of them are really right on target. And you can actually barely see there's a little bit of red there. That red is actually a small red X. That is the actual target. Okay, so we were actually pretty well on target, but we did have some outliers, but most of them were right on the money at 60%. So let's increase that to 70%. And now you see, doesn't take very long and uh, the hard architecture gets a little burdened. You can see those whiskers are really stretching out now. You still are kind of on target, but now the box is starting to also come out. So it's not 100% on target. It, yeah, probably okay, but if you're gonna do testing this way, you're already having issues. So if you go up to 80%, now not only do you see that everything is opened up, now you see the dot, that little dot is the target. And so it's not even at the median. So we're starting to miss the target at this point. And we, when we finally got to 90%, you can actually see that you get some really big outliers, but you're not even on target. You're actually, you're actually following the target. You're not even on it. And the customer could see this in the data and say, hey, this is not gonna work for us. So we tried a couple of different things. One of the things, that we did though, is we brought out one of our uh, late prototypes of the Neo Life Fire 2 at that time. And the customer obviously was, uh, maybe he, would, he really wasn't from Missouri, but he was definitely the show me kind of guy. And so he wanted to see the data. He would not even let us send him the, fire, the red, red 2 until we proved that it was good. And only then he would then take it himself and then prove it to himself. So then we sent him the red two. And so you see the whiskers are, are almost entirely gone. And this is just with our standard gateway builder, building it the way that he wanted, um, sorry, not the gateway builder, but, but basically with the replay file that we used, uh, you see basically now it's pretty much straight lines. There's a couple little variations in there which can be improved with some scripting, but that's how accurate 
that the red two can be. Its performance is, is loads better. And that's really in part because of the architecture uh, and the processors that we're using. So finally got the answer. I always wanted to know, everybody says red two is faster, it's better. Why? And this is why. So when can you get it? Red two, you can actually get now. They're actually in stock. Didn't check this morning. But um, the Red 2 8, 8 channel version is available right now. Fire 3, you're probably looking more at, I, I try to put numbers in here that were, uh, that were as liberal as possible, really. So we are actually aiming at having that ready in sometime the second half of this year. We already have uh, prototypes that are working. Uh, so uh, of course, parts, problems, like everybody's having, it's, uh, it's, it's forcing us to do redesigns and that is always painful. I think we've got one product we've done 11 redesigns on in the last year because every time we get near the end, a part would disappear and uh, it was uh, very painful. Features to be added. Uh, there are, I put some dates on here to give you some rough ideas because for, for most things, most people don't use these features, but there are some people that would really need these features. I wanna make sure that people know about them. Uh, the ability for the USB host, that's that USB type A connector that's in the side of the uh, Red 2 and Fire 3. That's usually where you plug in your mic to for, uh, for triggering. Uh, that is where you're going to pl plug in the Rad 4G modem or a USB modem, and also plug in our Rad IO2 uh, analog data acquisition. Uh, that is going to be supported later on this year. So hopefully Jonathan is not seeing anything at lies. I, I sent it, it to Ben and he's, he didn't complain. So I, I figured, well, this is... <laughs> yeah, exactly. So jo yeah, Jonathan uh, over here, he, he's actually uh, one of the two guys that lead our hardware teams and software teams. So uh, he's the guy that's responsible to try to hit these targets. Um, instant wake up. We do have instant wake up abilities that will be coming uh, on two can FD channels, and that's only on the Fire 3, and that will be sometime next year. Uh, we are going to support GPTP. Uh, we have had our own time sync, what we call ITS or Intrepid Time Sync for a while, uh, but we are going to move to the industry standard of GPTP, and that will be 2023, as well as having the ability, if you really need RTK for <coughs> centimeter resolution GPS, uh, and HD video recording through the access cameras on the Red 2 Fire 3. And right now we support two terabytes for the two SD cards. So basically one terabyte cards for each one. Once we can get some two terabyte cards, uh, then we should be able to support four terabytes of data logging on board. And then we do have, uh, just like I talked about the Red IO2, which uh, I think we have a presentation on this afternoon. Uh, we do support plugging into the USB to do data, analog data acquisition and the video data logging, which uh, Samir mentioned in vSpy, we can of course do in the hardware. Any questions, comments, concerns? Everybody wants to go to the break. Yes, go ahead. Okay, so the question was, uh, are we able to simulate multiple ECUs within the same device? Which I don't think I had that in the presentation. I, I don't know if I meant, oh, Oh, that, oh, actually, uh, go ahead, Samir. Yeah, this is, this might be better yeah. for Samir to answer. So go ahead. It's okay. How, so each device, like the like Red 2 8, for example, it has eight CAN networks. So, like, it has eight CAN networks. Each CAN network can have multiple ECUs. And each ECU can have its own database, or the network can have its own database. And you can load all of that in the spine. So now, if you have to, let's say, simulate four ECUs on the second network, yes, you can do that in the 